the new Olafunds River Arch Bridge was designed to address critical issues with the existing bridge located approximately 300 kilometers north of Cape Town on National Route 7. The original bridge, constructed in the 1950s, suffered from deterioration and was too narrow for increasing traffic, causing a bottleneck due to widened approach roads. The South African National Roads Agency Limited, Sonral, appointed Oricon to design a new bridge that would provide higher capacity and ensure a low maintenance structure. Design overview and challenges, the new bridge's design focused on three main challenges. Aesthetics, creating an integral structure requiring minimal maintenance and spanning the river with a long single span of 97 meters. Adopting an arch structure was a natural choice given the aesthetic considerations and the existing bridge's arch form. It also avoided placing support structures within the river, preventing obstructions. The new structure features a twin spine deck supported by two separate arches with intermediate tie beams, and the total length of the deck measures approximately 165 meters, including approach spans. Structural configuration, the deck accommodates two 3.7 meters wide traffic lanes and a 1.2 meters pedestrian walkway on one side. The decision to create a continuous deck structure between the abutments helped minimize expansion joints and maintenance intensive bearings, which were only necessary at the abutments. The deck consists of 12 spans, seven of which are over the arch, with the rest divided between the northern and southern approaches. Loading considerations the design accounted for various loads, including traffic, wind, flood, and temperature effects, per technical methods for Highway 7, TMH7. Traffic loading was applied to the full deck width, and wind loading was considered for the deck, arch, and columns. The bridge was designed to withstand a 150-year flood with no overtopping in a 1-100-year to 100 year event, aligning with its classification as a Class II road. Foundation and support challenges geotechnical complexities were encountered due to variable rock levels at the northern and southern arch foundations. The northern foundation required removal of weathered rock zones and additional support via mass concrete and rock anchors. The southern foundation posed an even greater challenge due to a sharp dip in the rock, necessitating a sloped redesign and additional mass concrete to achieve stability. Integral arch structures, like the Olifant's River Bridge, are statically indeterminate, making it difficult to predict load patterns. An analysis using LUSAS software was performed to identify critical loading patterns. The arch's relatively flat rise-to-span ratio generated significant bending moments, particularly at the arch foundations. To transfer these forces effectively, an iterative design process was followed, involving continuous updates based on geotechnical input regarding rotational stiffness. The Senku River Road Bridge Project in Lesotho is a major infrastructure initiative aimed at connecting communities by constructing a bridge over the Senku River, which is known as the Orange River upon entering South Africa. Originating from the Maluti Mountains in Lesotho, the Senku River is one of the few perennial rivers that contribute significantly to the water systems in South Africa. Currently, residents rely on rowboats to cross the river, a method that presents challenges, especially during periods of high water levels due to the river's expansive catchment area. This new bridge, once completed, is expected to bring transformative benefits to local communities. It will replace the unreliable ferry system and facilitate safer, more efficient, and year-round crossing, thus improving daily activities, trade, and access to essential services such as healthcare and education. The impact of the bridge is anticipated to be life-changing for these communities, fostering regional development and connectivity. The construction of the Senku River Road Bridge incorporates a steel composite structure which measures 142 meters in length and 11 meters in width,
It comprises two abutments and three piers, providing robust support. The design features steel girders topped with a concrete deck, ensuring durability and stability to withstand the river's dynamic conditions. This bridge design is well suited to the region's challenging environment, which often experiences unpredictable rises in water levels. To address these challenges, a sophisticated time-lapse monitoring system is employed to track river levels and project progress. This system captures high-definition images, offering a comprehensive view of construction developments for the project's client on a daily basis. The use of this monitoring technology also enhances safety and project management by providing real-time insights into river conditions and construction progress. Moreover, the online login facility enables stakeholders to remotely track the project's advancement from anywhere in the world. This accessibility offers project managers and clients the ability to stay informed about key developments, ensuring transparency and timely decision-making. The construction of the Senku River Road Bridge is a crucial development that will replace the current rowboat system, improving connectivity and livelihoods for local residents. By employing a durable steel composite design and innovative monitoring systems, this project is set to deliver long-lasting benefits to the region, enhancing both safety and accessibility. The M8, M73, M74 motorway improvements project is a major infrastructure undertaking in Scotland, initiated to enhance traffic flow and connectivity across critical transport corridors. One significant element within this broader project is the reconstruction of the Brayhead Rail Bridge near Bargetty. The M8, M73, and M74 are key arterial routes in the Scottish road network, connecting Glasgow with Edinburgh, the Central Belt, and major hubs like Aberdeen and the South. These motorways are crucial for both local commutes and freight transport, carrying a significant volume of traffic. By 2014 congestion and safety concerns, especially at critical junctions and narrow sections, had prompted the need for improvements. Thus, the £500 million motorway improvements project aimed to address these issues through upgrades and refurbishments to these key motorways. The Brayhead Rail Bridge, located in Bargetty, East Glasgow, is an essential rail crossing over the M73. As part of the motorway improvements project, it was identified as a critical structure requiring upgrades due to its age and the need to accommodate the evolving demands of both road and rail traffic. The bridge was part of a package of works, including the construction of new roads, modifications to existing junctions, and the replacement of outdated structures. The focus on the Brayhead Rail Bridge was essential to improve safety, maintain rail integrity, and increase the overall capacity of the M73 motorway below it. The works on the Brayhead Rail Bridge were centered on its demolition and reconstruction to accommodate the widening of the M73 motorway motorway beneath. The previous bridge, which had limited capacity, was no longer viable to sustain the increased road width and rail loads. The upgrade project involved dismantling the old bridge and replacing it with a modern structure, capable of supporting increased rail traffic and accommodating the expanded road width below. The replacement bridge was designed to meet the current standards for road safety, allowing for an enhanced and wider M73 carriageway below it. The reconstruction of the Brayhead Rail Bridge was carried out with minimal disruption to both road and rail traffic, thanks to meticulous planning and phased construction work. This segment of the overall motorway improvement project played a crucial role in enhancing the transport network by improving traffic flow, reducing bottlenecks, and increasing safety. The widened M73, facilitated by the new bridge, now supports increased vehicle capacity, helping to alleviate congestion in one of the busiest corridors in Scotland. Additionally, the replacement of the Brayhead Rail Bridge ensures greater resilience and longevity of the transport infrastructure in this region. The demolition of the four-span Chartershall Bridge marked a significant infrastructure project on Scotland's M9 motorway.
The old bridge, which had served the area for decades, had become a safety hazard due to repeated strikes by overheight vehicles. Situated over the M9, the bridge was on an unclassified road near Sterling, and over time, these incidents rendered the structure beyond repair, prompting road authorities to take action. The recurring damage to the bridge posed a major risk to road users and affected the integrity of the structure. With each collision from vehicles, exceeding the height limits, the Chartershall Bridge suffered incremental damage, which eventually became unmanageable. Due to these concerns, road authorities closed the bridge to road traffic for safety reasons, impacting the unclassified road that ran over it. Demolition was deemed the most practical and safe solution. The decision was motivated not just by the immediate structural concerns, but also by the need to improve safety and functionality in the long run. The planned replacement bridge aims to solve the recurring issue of overheight vehicle strikes by providing greater headroom clearance. This is a key part of the new design, intended to prevent such incidents in the future and maintain the bridge's structural integrity. In preparation for the demolition and reconstruction, extensive planning was undertaken to minimize disruptions. The demolition work was carefully coordinated to reduce the impact on traffic along the M9, a critical route linking Stirling and Edinburgh. Road closures and diversions were implemented to ensure the safety of both workers and motorists during the process. The new bridge, once completed, will restore the unclassified road connection that had been severed for safety reasons. This is expected to be of significant benefit to local residents and commuters, as it will reconnect previously closed routes and improve local traffic flow. Additionally, the improved design with increased clearance will contribute to the longevity and resilience of the bridge. The Limern Pump Storage Power Plant, a marvel of engineering and logistics, the Limern Pump Storage Power Plant is a landmark project by AXPO, serving as a large-scale energy storage facility designed to enhance power supply flexibility. Situated between the Limern Sea and Mutsi reservoirs, this underground plant utilizes the height difference between the two lakes to store and release water, converting it into electrical energy based on demand. The project involves a blend of advanced steel hydraulic engineering, meticulous planning, and sophisticated logistics to manage the construction in the rugged mountainous terrain. The primary function of the Limern Pump Storage Power Plant is to balance energy supply with fluctuating electricity demands. When energy consumption is low, water is pumped from the lower Limern Sea Reservoir to the higher elevated Mutsi Reservoir, which is 630 meters above. During periods of high electricity demand, this water is released back down to generate power. The significant height difference between the two lakes creates a powerful gravitational force that drives the water through turbines, producing electricity. To facilitate this process, the project required the construction of large tunnels and the installation of robust steel pipes capable of withstanding the immense water pressure exerted due to the steep elevation drop. This requires specialized construction techniques, known as steel hydraulic engineering, which ensures the integrity and safety of the tunnels. One of the critical aspects of the project is the creation and installation of the steel pipes, which are essential for handling the massive water pressure. The pipes are manufactured in a dedicated facility at Tierfed, where preheated steel plates approximately 6 cm thick are bent into shape. This bending process is highly precise, taking 4 to 6 hours per plate, and is closely monitored and controlled by computer systems to ensure millimeter accuracy. After the plates are shaped, their edges are carefully prepared for welding. Each weld is initiated by aligning and tack welding the ends of the plates. The welding robot then performs the main welding process, creating a definitive seam over multiple layers which takes around 16 hours. 
During this period, the weld must be kept at a consistent temperature to maintain its integrity. Given the immense water pressure these pipes must withstand, each weld undergoes rigorous inspections, including checks for welding current, temperature, and structural integrity. Post-welding, the seams are ground flat, and each pipe is drilled with four injection holes. These holes are essential for filling the pipes with concrete during installation, adding an extra layer of reinforcement. Six to seven pipes are produced each week, each weighing up to 20 tons, and ready to be transported up the mountain. Transporting these heavy and large pipes through the challenging mountainous terrain is a major logistical undertaking. The pipes are carried one by one by a specially designed construction cableway, ascending over 1,000 meters to reach the mountain station at Kalktritli. Over 800 pipes in total are required for the entire project. Once at Kalktritli, the pipes are moved through a three-kilometer-long tunnel to Oxenstefeli near Lemurn Sea. From there, a second construction cableway hauls them further up to Mutsi. At the third cableway tower, the pipes are unloaded and brought into a valve chamber, from where they are eventually lowered into the pressure shafts for final installation. The transportation of these pipes presents substantial logistical challenges due to the rugged construction environment. The main access tunnel, which is the only route to the entire construction site, permits no opposing traffic, making it critical to coordinate the movement of materials precisely. Each journey journey through the tunnel takes approximately 20 minutes, ending at the base of the second construction cableway. All transport operations are planned in detail to avoid delays and interruptions. Once transported to the valve chamber, three pipes are welded together to form a larger section. This reduces the number of welds required later in the pressure shafts, saving time and ensuring a higher level of precision. Robotic welders perform this task, achieving exceptional accuracy in the process. The final stage of installation involves lowering these welded sections, each 9 meters long and weighing 60 tons, into the pressure shafts. The shafts, which are inclined at around 40 degrees, demand significant physical effort and expertise for welding. Skilled welders manually weld the pipes, working on each seam for four to five days. Each seam is inspected multiple times, including magnetic testing that uses fluorescent liquids to detect any potential flaws. After the welding is completed, the pipe sections receive a protective coating to prevent rust, ensuring their durability over the long term. The Noryang Grand Bridge is a remarkable feat of engineering and the third longest suspension bridge in South Korea. Stretching 890 meters, it ranks just behind the Yi Sun Sin Bridge, 1,545 meters, and the Ulsan Bridge, 1,150 meters. Located at a historically significant site, it serves as a modern testament to South Korea's rich naval and engineering heritage, connecting Deoksin Ri and Solcheon Mayan in Namhai Gun, Jongnam, to Noryang Ri, Jiamnam Mayan, Hadong Gun. The bridge was constructed by GSE&C, a company known for its innovation in the field of civil engineering. One of the bridge's most distinguishing features is its main towers, which are inclined at an 8-degree angle. The towers form a V shape, symbolizing the victory of Admiral Yi Sun Sin, who famously led his forces to triumph against the Japanese Navy in the historic Battle of Noryang in 1598. This design not only adds aesthetic appeal, but also reflects the historical importance of the location, where the Joseon Kingdom and Ming Dynasty joined forces to repel the invading Japanese fleet. Technological Innovations 3D cables and inclined towers, the Noryang Grand Bridge is notable for several technological firsts. The designers opted for an inclined main tower, which required sophisticated engineering solutions to manage the bridge's structural load. By connecting the supporting cables at these inclines, the tension on the main cables was reduced, enhancing stability and creating the signature V-shaped towers. Moreover, the project utilized 3D cables, a 
world first in suspension bridge design. Unlike traditional cables, the 3D arrangement improves the bridge's resistance to wind forces, a critical feature given the bridge's coastal location. The cables are arranged in a streamlined pattern that allows them to effectively withstand strong winds, ensuring both safety and durability. Building a bridge of this scale required overcoming several technical challenges. The main cable, consisting of 7,680 strands of 5.3 mm wire, was constructed using the air spinning method. In this technique, individual wires are carried by a spinning wheel and assembled strand by strand. The main cable is compacted tightly using a specialized machine to ensure a stable and secure structure. Anchorage installations were also carefully optimized to maximize wind resistance and stability. This is a crucial element for a suspension bridge of such length, especially in a coastal region. The anchorage structures are designed to handle the equivalent weight of approximately 35,000 medium-sized passenger cars. The project required meticulous planning and extensive calculations to ensure the longevity and reliability of the bridge. The construction process of the Noryang Bridge was as impressive as the final structure. The pylons were built to a height of 2.1 meters in 15 separate stages using reinforced concrete. After the completion of the main towers, a series of temporary structures were installed to facilitate the cable laying operations. Catwalks were installed between the towers, providing a working platform for engineers and workers during the installation of the main cables. Additionally, steel girders weighing 8,500 tons were manufactured manufactured at a specialized facility in Guangyang and transported in sections to the bridge site. These girders were lifted into place using barges and cranes, including a 1,200-ton offshore crane that handled large sections of up to 45 meters in length. The bridge is designed not only for functionality, but also for visual appeal. Equipped with state-of-the-art lighting, the Noryang Grand Bridge changes color to reflect the four seasons, creating an enchanting night view that enhances the beauty of the surrounding Hallio Maritime National Park. The bridge's top plate includes an epoxy layer that acts as a waterproof barrier, ensuring durability. A layer of silica sand was applied evenly to provide friction and enhance safety for vehicles.